Hello, my name's John Capobianco, and yes, I have a fresh haircut and a new look a little bit. Time to clean up. Anyway, I'm here today to talk about, I think, the future of AI agent development. Not just AI agents, we, we've covered some AI agent work in the past. And um, I wanted to start using some new tooling, partly because of some deprecation warnings, also partly because I've seen some visualizations uh, that were appealing to me. So we're going to be exploring Lang Graph platform, which includes the Lang Graph Studio, Lang Graph API, Lang Graph documentation, and a few other things. I've turned this into a container, and I'm going to be using Space Agents because it's a simple hello world and anyone can follow along. So for some of these APIs, you are going to need an API key. For now, you're going to need a ChatGPT key, and you're going to need what's known as a LangSmith API key, because the LangSmith dashboard is going to be a portal into our LangGraph Studio. So there's some appealing advantages to this, and let me just go ahead and jump in Excalibur. So what I had previously, which was still, I believe, a very valid approach, where we had a router agent in front of a bunch of other agents and these agents um, sort of had autonomy to do what they wanted and the traffic would flow you know from the user's prompt through the router to and from the different agents um, great approach lots of great success a couple of downsides are some of the determinism let me just say, you know, one, two, three, four, in sort of more of a logical flow that you might want these agents to be called. And in network automation, we want some determinism, right? A capital D, determinism. I want to know that this automation is going to flow in a workflow, but sometimes the router agent might, might call, let's say, NetBox first and then call my selector REST API, where I want the reverse order to happen. Or I might have some of these agents might have, I don't want to say dependencies, but there is more of a mesh, more of a mesh of agents as opposed to everything through a router function. The other thing is coming to the end. Um, and I've seen this, and some of you saw this in some of my earlier work where these agents tend to want to iterate even once they have the correct answer sometimes i've seen them iterate these agents are also very heavily template driven and they were about you know 100 150 lines of code we're going to do some side by side comparison so what's new and what's interesting about this new approach um i sort of like this new approach in that we have it more um, I'm going to draw it like this for now. Just give me a second to draw a couple of agents. And then sort of at the bottom. And then kind of end and start. So let me zoom out a little bit. And that's not a bad representation. So now the question comes in. And it still has a kind of a routing function here to decide which agent to use. But these agents can now sort of cross collaborate. So, and then we have kind of the final agent here, right? So here is going to be natural language. Here is going to be natural language. Here are our agents, which have the tooling, the tools. And they are tiny, tiny little discrete agents. And this is a, a graph. And you're going to see the visual graph in a few moments. But this collectively is a graph <clears throat> as opposed to the chain from Lang Chain. So we started with Lang Chain. I've been using this for about two years now in Python. But if we go to the Lang Graph, they're trying to drive people towards Lang Graph. And you'll see this in some of the deprecation warnings and memory and state tracking and some other clear advantages that graph has over lang chain 
So I would recommend that you start with this, build a basic chatbot, follow these instructions, and you'll see that we have the start, chatbot, end, and it's you'll, you'll be up and running in moments, okay? Learn the basics. The other place I would go to is the overview here, the conceptual guide, but we're going to be looking at LangGraph Studio, which is made up of the platform and the server, and then we're going to visit this UI through LangSmith's portal. So let's take a look first before we get going at two different agents, the different approaches. So this one's really huge. Just hang on a second. All right, so what you're looking at here is the ISS locator code that I had to decorate the tools and the tool names and I had this prompt and I created my agent and had an agent executor, a nice templatable easy to follow guide to make an AI agent. I'll show you the same code, uh, ISS locator node, is now 36 lines of code. And some of that's logging, um, and, and it really is just a tiny little function whose job is to get the latitude longitude from the uh, API. So that in itself has become easier. The other thing is, um, I have different agents. So I have a weather node, an astronauts in space, an ISS locator. I have a router node that just sort of decides with a prompt, based on the human's prompt, which sub-agents should get involved in answering that prompt. All right? There is a state file, and this is new. And this just tracks state across the different agents so they can refer to the state throughout the uh, graph okay so this state file is new and this lang graph file which is json is new so in fact if i show you the docker file the script i'm sorry we're going to be running lang graph dev that's the command to get this started but in order for this to run we have to be in the same folder as our LangGraph JSON, where it's going to be looking for the compiled graphs and the dependency file. So I have this run LangGraph file, which is 110 lines of code, pretty small. And we're gonna pay attention to this one a little bit closer. So this is where I'm gonna be bringing in all of my other nodes and my state. Okay, so these are all of the nodes. And then I'm going to make a graph, a state graph, adding the nodes, defining some routing functions for, you know, a general routing function and a weather routing function, setting an entry point as my router node, defining the conditional edges, because there's some conditions here for these edge nodes, and then having a finish point which in my case is going to be the natural language node. Now the natural language node is only 100 lines of code, but its job is to take in the human input and, or the, excuse me, the JSON output from the other agents and turn it into human language. All right, and then we compile this graph. So again, I've decided to use this in Docker. So I have a Docker Compose that exposes 24, 20, 2024. And the little Docker file that installs the LangGraph dev, LangChain OpenAI, so I can use ChatGPT, and Fast API. My little startup script, because I'm running it in Docker, I have to map all zeros and the port, so it's not localhost and I can reach it now from the cloud. So let's bring this up and I'll show you what this looks like. So we're just gonna do a Docker, let's make it sure it's down, okay. And we'll do Docker Compose up build. And what you can see here is, welcome to LangGraph, okay. Now the first thing is that there's an API and we can revisit this API um, through a curl in a little bit. I haven't tried that yet, I'd like to try that. 
and the documentation. Now, what I found interesting is when you really look at the documentation, it references my graph ID as space agent. So this is how I could create an assistant against the space agent. So I think if I, um, you know, I might be able to run a thread here, create a thread and then get the answer. Um, but it does have this customized API in order for me to interact with it. And we have the models and all kinds of great stuff, all kinds of great stuff. But the real key to this is this link here. Now for this link to work, you need a LangSmith API, either in your environment variables, or in this case, there's a .env file that you can make. Let's make sure everything's, let me go back to studio here. That's, of course, while I'm recording. I don't know why it's not answering. There we go. Yeah, excuse me. So if you're using this at home, the link it provides here in the header is actually incorrect. You don't want to use the all zeros for this link, uh, you wanna make sure that's localhost. Okay, that's what happened there. Okay, so let's get to the exciting part here. So this is the studio portion. And you can see I'm in my space agent here. Now there's some things, some nerd knobs I haven't toggled or played with yet, but we're gonna start up here in the corner. We can get the JSON or the pretty output. We can add to a data set and we can toggle the different levels of uh, verbosity, right? If we want to start a new thread, because I just brought the container up, there are no threads. We can set interrupts if we want to pause it during the flow if we're doing troubleshooting or interrupt on all. We can actually adjust memory and set some memory here. Now, I haven't played with this yet either, but if I zoom in, we have the start, which goes to the router node. And the router node takes the natural language from the user input and decides whether or not to invoke the ISS locator node, the astronauts in space, or the weather node. Now you're gonna notice they all funnel down. Whoops, hang on, ha. <laughs> they all funnel down into the natural language which flows down to the end. This is a little weird, hang on. So, and you can see that there is not a dependency, but the ISS locator node, which could come back with latitude, longitude, could then pass that latitude, longitude to the weather node, or right from the router node, we could go directly to the weather node with a latitude, longitude, or a city. Right now, in terms of the user input, location, ISS location, it shows you which one's required. So the user input's required, but I could easily add some optional location or latitude, longitude. I could hard code all of these values into these agents because that's what they take in naturally. Now, this is actually going to be animated. We can actually watch the flow here if we pay attention to the top left corner. Watch this up here. And then we'll look at the thread. So let's just start with where is the ISS right now? And we're going to hit submit. See it goes from the router node to the locator node to the natural language answer node. And if I collapse this, we have the user input and the final answer. But if we look here, the user input came in as where's the ISS right now? It calls the next, the router node decides to call the locator node, passing it that user input. They didn't request any weather information. The locator node gets the latitude longitude, and the natural language turns that into natural language. And if I go to output here, we can see the final answer and the user input and everything is the values. We could even get it as JSON, which is what the API would come back with. So if we went against this API and had this user input, 
and optionally a latitude longitude or we could request weather right you can see how it all comes together as the JSON right so now let's start a new thread and actually I can toggle this even deeper or I could minimize the output we could rerun anything from a certain point in time rerun from here view the state of that where it is there's the checkpoint ID pretty cool right and this is a thread now remember in the documentation this thread I could refer to with an API call and get all this via an API right and so now let's try to do a new thread and let's see if we can get it to um, go through all the way through the weather node from the ISS locator node right so what we can say here is where is the ISS right now and how is the weather there and we're gonna hit submit now let's watch this in action router router node to ISS locator to, to weather to natural language and it failed to retrieve the weather data that's so it's because of the location there is no weather for this latitude longitude and that's fine that that's okay there is no weather for that current location um, and then so let's start a new thread that's unfortunate we just have to wait a few seconds for it to get across the ocean um, who is in space right now and we're gonna hit submit so this time it chose the astronauts in space node it got all 10 astronauts and now it's in the natural language node where we get the natural language pretty wicked right and if I go to the JSON here in the output we can see this was how it handled it who is in space right now and there's the astronauts and then we got the final answer from the LLM just radical just a very awesome platform so what am I going to do next with this uh, I actually have um, a few more space things I'm going to add to this I might even make a video of how I add um, an agent and how I use chat GPT to help me code these agents to, uh, Jeremy Schulman actually recommended I make a separate video entirely about how I'm programming and how I'm using these tools to help me develop solutions so I'm likely going to record that again, or record that next, using the um, astro the photo of the day from the space APIs. So um, this doesn't take much to get going. You saw it's it's 30 lines of code for a REST API as an agent. It's 50 lines of code for a graph, and away you go. You 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 just spin it up and off you go. So agents. Imagine hundreds of agents in that dashboard or a more complex workflow or in your mind solving problems and being able to call different puzzle pieces together agentically, right? This really has a lot of promise. So I want to thank all the people at um, Lang Chain and Lang Smith and Lang Graph. Um, they, they have a Slack channel you can join now and they're there to help you. They gave me a little bit, a few pointers to get me going and uh, I was off to the races. So we'll see you soon.